Hello, Hashi Talks Build. Thanks so much for popping into this virtual event from the comfort of your own chair. Uh, this is a really cool and accessible event uh, to gather practitioners and user groups. And thank you to the developer experience and other teams at HashiCorp that organize it. And uh, thanks so much for having me. In this Terraform related talk, uh, we're going on a short whirlwind tour uh, chatting about the Terraform Cloud API in general, uh, the primary Go client uh, and that wraps that API, and the associated Terraform provider that a lot of users, uh, HashiCorp itself included, actually use to ultimately provision Terraform using Terraform, which is a fun little cycle to think about. Uh, my name is Chris Arcand. I'm a principal engineer here at HashiCorp where I focus on, you guessed it, Terraform and Terraform Cloud. Um, you can find me on the Twitters and at GitHub and most everywhere else on the internet as at Chris Arcand. So if you're watching this talk, you probably already know what a Terraform is. It's the open source de facto tool for multi-cloud infrastructure provisioning. We're going to talk about one layer past that point about the commercial platform built for Terraform by HashiCorp called Terraform Cloud. And Terraform Cloud, or TFC, is a free-to-use self-service SaaS platform that extends the capabilities of the open-source Terraform tool and adds collaboration and automation features. Whether you're a small team looking for basic state management or remote execution or you're a massive enterprise looking for things like audit logging, self-hosted agent runners, etc., 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 it's a really neat platform we've built out to really enrich your Terraform experience. So the thing that really powers the entire platform at its core is this thing called the V2 API, or the version two of the API that we built for it. Um, let's talk about that. There's four big points that I kind of want to go over. One of them is that uh, this whole API that the platform is built on is JSON API compliant. So it follows a specification that kind of gives it this really consistent look and feel. Um, it's very comprehensive. It includes the majority of all the functionality that you see in the user interface of the entire platform. Um, it's very stable. It's backed by our stability policy, promising backwards compatibility. So you can build stuff on top of it without feeling like all that is gonna change uh, on a moment's whim, right? It also has a consistent look and feel with the documentation, but more importantly, it's comprehensive uh, documentation that, that allows you to really find uh, what you need as you're building things on top of it. So kind of going into each one of those things in a little more detail, as I said, it's built on the JSON API specification. The JSON API specification is this, is this um, adopted open spec that you can look at on the JSON API website, and it specifies the overall feel and design of the API. Most notably, uh, the things that it kind of specifies are HTTP error codes, so what errors you should expect back given some sort of error state. Um, error objects, so the data and detail about what the error what error occurred to be in a consistent state. Uh, the document structure, so a resource as a remote object in the API, what does the response look like? What could you expect each thing to look like? Um, and the HTTP request and response headers, what are the sorts of headers that you should expect on every single request uh, and response in the API? So here's an example of what one response might look like. Every sort of uh, document response includes a resource identifier uh, that has a body that looks kind of like this. So there's always a data key, there's always a consistent type, and that type is unique across the entirety of the API. So if you see a vars type in one spot, if you see that in another request elsewhere, you know that it's the same sort of resource. You'll always see uh, an attributes key with whatever attributes that specific resource uh, declares. And then you'll usually see uh, a key called relationships, which uh, signifies uh, how one resource in the API is related to the other. So for example, in this case, this is a variable uh, resource and you can see that it is related. Uh, it's included in that particular workspace at that uh, particular uh, identifier there. 
The next point was that it's really comprehensive. So a lot, everything that you see on the screen there, this is literally just like the sidebar of the terraform.io website with all of the different documentation there. There's a lot here, right? It, it, there's an API for agent pools, agent tokens, applies, comments, OAuth clients, runs, plans, workspaces, users. I'm, I'm not gonna go and list the whole thing, but as you can see, it includes basically everything uh, possible in the uh, Terraform Cloud API, or sorry, in the platform is in the API. And that's a really powerful and really cool thing uh, that we will see. Lastly, it's very stable. It uh, has a stability promise uh, that we've put forth, I think it was a couple of years ago now, uh, that basically says, you know, we're not going to change everything out from underneath you. You can, you can feel confident building the sort of deep integrations that you want to build without uh, everything being thrown away. It's very compatible. We're going to make sure that we only add to it and that we don't uh, break anything subject only to you know security vulnerabilities if there's something if there's something wrong there where we need to make a change that is backwards compatible we'll go ahead and do that but we'll make sure to to notify you uh, of it and that's a very rare occurrence really lastly lastly it's well documented so there as i said there on the terraform.io website at cloud docs there is a really great uh, uh site uh, that the education team uh, has built out uh, that documents all of the different aspects of this terraform cloud api and uh, their behaviors it's really really quite awesome so with this really comprehensive, well-documented API, you might be wondering like, well, uh, who really uses this thing? A lot of things. First off, Terraform Cloud itself. So the reason why that API is so, so comprehensive is that TFC's uh, entire public user interface, so the user interface that you use to click around and uh, work with Terraform Cloud, it utilizes that public v2 API. So it's not any sort of uh, situation where we have a stack where we just kind of expose things uh, uh, as necessary to the API. We really, we, we design it, uh, we, we are forced to design it really as an as a intentional thing. We're forced to design it as like a consumer of ourselves. Uh, so we put a lot of thought into um, you know how the api is designed not only because we want you to be able to build on top of it but we literally need to be able to build on top of it uh, for terraform cloud itself another thing that uses it terraform so the terraform cli the tool that you know and love integrates with terraform cloud via this api when you're doing things like remote operations starting a terraform apply in your console that kicks off uh, a build and a run up in Terraform Cloud and streams it back to your terminal and all that business, that is all done via this Terraform Cloud API. Other HashiCorp tool integrations, other stuff definitely uses uh, this Terraform Cloud API. These are the ones that I've personally worked on. I'm sure there's more, but I know that there's uh, integrations with Vault. Uh, with console, with Waypoint, I'm sure there's some of the others, but as I said, this is my own uh, personal experience anyway. AWS, so AWS Labs, uh, and more importantly, just command line interfaces in general, there's a whole bunch of uh, command line interfaces that have been built out for Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise, uh, and they are all built, again, on top of this API. So this one's a really popular one, again, from AWS Labs, uh, that uh, you know it wraps around the API. There's also other ones. So I know CBS Interactive has another one uh, called TFC-CLI. Uh, there's a community one called Terraform Control or TFCTL. Uh, and there's also an unofficial HashiCorp one called TFX as well. So there's a lot of these different wrappers around uh, you know using Terraform Cloud uh, in and managing it in your in your command line as well and you. So more generally, uh, without all of these other projects, uh, you know, our users and our customers here uh, on Terraform Cloud really do utilize uh, and exercise that API via custom scripting and all the different uh, things that you can build that don't necessarily, you know, use a proper command line interface or anything like that, all that CI automation, stuff like that. The, again, the API is just so comprehensive and you can do so many different things with it that we see people utilizing that API interface quite a bit. 
So, um, how do you consume this sort of API? Like, you know, if if there it's if it's used by so many different things, surely there are some solid API clients that really take care of the minutia of authentication and pagination and all those different things. Well, there definitely is. So the official one uh, that we maintain and HashiCorp maintains uh, is called GoTFE. It is a Go client, and you can find it, uh, you know, in the Go packages website uh, and all over on GitHub. It's HashiCorp slash GoTFE. Um, it is the official Go client for TFC. Very, very comprehensive, wraps everything that you would expect uh, you know, in the API. Um, and it is the, it is really the integration point that a lot of the consumers of the API that I just talked about, um, Terraform itself, uh, that AWS labs tool, uh, the provider that we'll talk about in a minute, all of those different things, they directly use this go package, this, uh, go TFE client. Um, by the way, it's called go TFE. So the, the TFE designation is kind of a historical term. So like, um, the uh, service used to be called Terraform Enterprise. Now it's called Terraform Cloud, and the on-prem version is called Terraform Enterprise. Whatever. The most important thing to remember is just that when we say TFE here, it's really Terraform Cloud and the on-premises version of Terraform Cloud, which is called Terraform Enterprise. And this, just quick, is kind of what this looks like. You would, it's exactly what you would kind of expect from from a Go client. You're able to create a workspace, update that workspace, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So beyond GoTFE, there's several other community supported clients. Um, this is a whole bunch. I'm not going to go over each and every one, but the main point is that uh, a lot of the ones uh, here, are the popular ones on the screen that I have here, they're not just Go. Like they're, you know, there's there's a uh, there's a client for Ruby, there's a client for Python, for .NET, uh, for you know Bash scripting and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of different languages. You don't need to use Go necessarily to wrap the Terraform Cloud API within the client. So we have this really comprehensive API, as I said. Um, as a Terraform user, you know that you, uh, you know, every day plan and apply changes uh, it, via these providers to all these different things, right? Well, you can provision changes to AWS, to GCP, to Azure, whatever, 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 right? If there's this really comprehensive API where you can manipulate things and build things, et cetera, you might instantly be thinking like, well, what if we, if it's just an API, can, does that mean we can Terraform, Terraform Cloud? Can we, can we actually create a, 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 and plan and apply resources to Terraform Cloud using Terraform? What's stopping you? Well, the answer is absolutely nothing. You can totally do that, and people do that quite a bit. Um, and, you know, taking it another step further, you can also use Terraform to use Terraform Cloud to plan and apply changes in Terraform to Terraform Cloud, which is a fun, the fun little endless cycle that, uh, uh, that we'll talk about here. How are we able to do that? We're able to do that via this thing called the TFE Provider which allows you to, again, pre provision Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise with Terraform itself. Um, really popular provider. We have a lot of users that uh, utilize this a lot. Again, very comprehensive, covers a whole chunk of the API and allows you to uh, provision all of that stuff in a workflow that you're used to, which is Terraform. This is what it looks like. Again, uh, you know, the API is very straightforward. You can see how to create all of the different stuff in the Terraform platform. Yeah, it's, it works out really, really well. Um, so it's kind of an example for like how one would really utilize this thing. I kind of, I'll use my own use case uh, as an example. So um, a pattern that we often see is basically using a sort of bootstrap or meta workspace in Terraform Cloud to then provision the rest of that stuff in an organization. So this is a public repository. You can take a look at it later um, where I basically have uh, a set of workspaces coming from an input variable where I can very, very quickly spin up uh, new Terraform Cloud workspaces to use those. Um, very, very quickly with very, very minimal uh, configuration. So those values are coming from these uh, variable declarations. Um, 
This is kind of a random little aside, but I'm very, I'm so excited about this. This isn't really related to the provider, but I wanted to show it anyway. Um, the way that I do that is using these sort of optional declarations. These optional declarations are a new feature coming to Terraform soon. So they're called optional attributes for object type input variable values. Um, this is an experimental feature that was introduced in Terraform 014, but now it is becoming stable in the upcoming Terraform 1.3.0 release. So I'm very, very excited. I've actually been using this for a very long time. It allows you to be able to do things like this, where again, I need to toy around with Terraform cloud workspaces and all that sort of stuff really quickly all the time. What I actually have is literally just a variables file where I can add one line to provision a new workspace with all of the usual defaults that I really like in a Terraform Cloud workspace and override them where necessary. So this is my variables file. It's literally just an object that declares workspaces and I just put a name in and it'll give me a workspace. It'll plan and apply that workspace. Um, and again, I can choose to override. I don't have to have a full Terraform um, uh, block stanza to, to set everything, all of my required arguments and all that sort of stuff can be implicitly, you know, implied here in the, in the, in the variables file. So that's pretty cool. Main point though, again, we have this meta workspace here. What that allows is um, the ability to bootstrap everything else. So you'll see this pattern a whole ton. We have a lot of users that do this. This is really powerful stuff. This means that for the same reason that you don't want to be clicking through your uh, cloud provider user interface, configuring all that stuff, you can apply that same sort of uh, principle to Terraform Cloud itself and Terraform your Terraform Cloud. So in summary, like again, TFC has this really comprehensive, really uh, thought out uh, developer API. It's got a whole bunch of different clients, including the Go official one uh, and several third-party ones in other languages. Uh, there's a Terraform provider for the Terraform cloud platform itself. Um, there's an integration in Terraform CLI with uh, TFC, and there's all sorts of several, uh, you know, third-party command line tools to go with that as well. It's extremely extensible is really what this talk is all about. And uh, we here at HashiCorp building Terraform Cloud uh, utilize that a lot ourselves as well as our customers. Uh, Terraform Cloud is really built with Terraform Cloud. So uh, a lot of our uh, development practices and how we're releasing features on the platform uh, and provisioning things that underpin it and whatnot are actually using uh, Terraform Cloud itself or separately Terraform Enterprise and whatnot to, to do those things. And it's really, it's a, it's a unique and awesome uh, thing that I, you know, don't forget to appreciate every day that we're, we get to work on this tool where we get to use it to build the tool. And that, that sort of dog fooding, like, uh, uh, you know, that's an opportunity that, that not everyone gets. And it's a, it's a cool experience to really, um, you know, see how you can make the tool better because you are a user of, of your own tool. And that's about it. That's all I got. Uh, again, my name is Chris Arcand. I'm a principal engineer working on Terraform at HashiCorp. You can find me basically everywhere as at Chris Arcand. And don't be afraid to reach out and say hi. I love chatting with users and gathering feedback for how to make Terraform better for you. Thanks. <laughs>